Hi, in this series we're gonna try to create couple textures when it comes to muzzle flashes. As you can see here, um, I've already made couple uh, particle systems, mainly for my patrons this month. Um, we'll be recreating um, all of those on my Patreon. Uh, but on YouTube, I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna create those three uh, textures uh, using Substance Design. So we're gonna start with uh, this texture. Uh, the second video will be uh, this one, which is fairly similar in terms of shape. However, it's got just uh, a lot more details and I think it could be even used for semi-realistic semi uh, projects. And this one is just a little bit over the top uh, and very stylized as well. Okay, so let's jump into substance now. So I'm going to start with a shape node and what I want to do, I just want to create this rectangular shape, something like this. And basically I want to cut out the circular shapes from it and create this uh, stylized cutout um, spike uh, from this uh, shape. Okay, so next one I'm going to use tile sampler in here I'm just gonna use the default uh, disk uh, pattern I'm gonna reduce the amount to maybe six by six and I'm gonna also copy and paste this shape here and use it as a mask input in the tile sampler note I'm just gonna scroll down where it, the mask uh, map threshold is. I'm gonna uh, use the slider up to one and then invert the mask using this button and now I'm just gonna change the position to be random. And I think now might be a good time to actually blend it together using using subtract and blending mode. As you can see we're kind of getting this erosion from this texture um, here but obviously we want a, a lot more and a lot more different shapes so basically let's tweak the size so I want circles to be squashed and quite random as well and not so random on the Y maybe 0.3 and now I'm just gonna start increasing the scale as you can see we're kind of eating uh, the data from the shape and we're kind of getting a really nice stylized look to it I think. I'm gonna change the scale random as well and I think at this point I'm looking for something that is uh, very pointy and uh, something that maybe um, looks more like a spike so I'm just gonna go to the position random and tweak this value and look for something that uh, I think might work so I personally think that this could work, possibly. Um, let's change the scale a little bit and erode a little bit more data from the texture. Mm, yeah, so try to create something like this using the, this technique. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use Trapsoid Transform Grayscale and just scale it at the top to create this uh, um, spike. I'm just going to disable the tiling as well here and at the bottom I'm actually going to um, use minus value so minus one so it's going to stretch the, the bottom of that shape and now I can just change it to whatever I, whatever I think it's going to work so I'm kind of going for a low value on the minus scale. And next I want to use transform and I want to rotate this. So this was going to be my main shape uh, for the muzzle flash. But I need some details which I'm going to recreate exactly from that shape. So I'm just going to use splatter circular node. Plug this into pattern input. Double click. Change the pattern to image. And here I'm just going to uh, make a couple tweaks. I want to do symmetry random, but only on the horizontal axis. 
and now I'll just scale down the radius and scale up the, mm, the size values and just make it a lot more random using the uh, the sliders here uh, also I want to use spread to maybe something like this and now I think it's a good time to actually play with the random uh, size here I'm going to increase the scale of it up to 5 because I need those really nice cutout shapes that I got here. However, if I'm going to use scale, it's going to stretch out those shapes and I'm kind of losing it. And I only get like a straight edge, which is not something that I want. And I'm also probably going to reduce the, the amount of the pattern something to maybe 5. And I really like kind of those little results. Now I think maybe the spread might be a little bit larger and also the size. Maybe I can increase it a little bit. Right, okay, so we end up with something like this. And now I'm gonna use transform as well because I want to move this around. And I'm gonna blend this with the main shape here using add linear. Now I can just click once on the transformation node and just move it somewhere around here and even scale it. And I get something like this. Obviously I want to disable the tiling. And now maybe let's go back to the splatter and tweak couple um, nodes here. Sorry, couple sliders like radius for example maybe radius random maybe actually let's scale it down and see if we can tweak it that way and using the radius as well I kind of want those spikes to extend even further. So I'm just trying to find a value without cutting out the uh, the edges of this. So I need to scale back the radius and try to find a balance. Right, so I think something like this could work. Okay, that's it. And now I'm gonna use a transform as well because I need to scale this down a little bit. Because what I wanna do next, I wanna use a slope blur. And for the actual slope, I'm gonna use shape. This soft circle. And we're kinda getting this. However, I'm gonna reduce the samples to low value, like two maybe. So I get this nice uh, gray outline, which kind of gives me this uh, very stylized look, I think. Uh, the next thing I want to create the glow around it. So again, I just want to use transform just to move this a little bit toward the center and maybe scale it down slightly. Okay, I'm going to use this uh, shape next and I'm actually going to use blur. And I probably need to use transform right after. I'm going to blend this back into our main shape. However, I'm going to run our main shape through the blur as well, just so I can have like a very low intensity to get rid of very sharp edges, like something like 0 0.05. And I'm going to use add. Or actually, no, maybe a different a blending note because I only want the blur. Right, I 
think I'm going to change the order here. So now I can control the opacity. So let's say I just want just a little bit of the of the blur and the glow around it. And now I can just move it somewhere here. Right, so what's next? Well, let's try to uh, create like a white core, because if you think about the temperature and basically how it comes out from the GAN, I'd imagine that there'll be like a very high glowy bit here, and then it's going to spill into orange and then the red in the end. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the bevel, scale it down to something like this. Next will be histogram scan. As you can see, we're kind of revealing it, but I only want just a little bit for the for the light glow. Okay, now I'm gonna blend this with the main shape, and this is important. I think the main shape needs to be at the top, because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reduce this and unveil basically this uh, white core here. Okay. Right, the next bit will be the uh, directional blur I want to add. So let's add maybe transform first in case we have to move it and then directional blur. So I want this uh, moving motion to be added just a little bit, something like this. And let's blend it back in with the blur at the top so we can basically reduce the opacity on it because we just need a little bit and the blending now maybe to add maybe max I think max works better I want to double check if the the previous blur on the max might actually work better max possibly but it does increases our core but it's fine we can scale it later which is what I'm gonna do now Cool. Also, I want to plug in here the transform. So I want to move our core just a little bit towards here. Right. So we end up with uh, something that looks like this. And the last bit is maybe a little bit of warp. So I'm going to grab this texture, run it through blur and then warp it here. Let's see what we're going to get. So not blend blur. Okay. Blur. And I'm just going to reduce the intensity on that blur node. Get something like this. And now in warp just, just a little bit. And I'm going to blend this back in. Obviously you can skip this step if this is not something that you actually want. And warp at the top so I can control the opacity. And now if I just want a little bit of those lines, I can just bring them back. Okay, I'm going to increase my core now, because I think it's a little bit too small in comparison with the other ones. I'll do something like this. And maybe now let's colorize it. So gradient map. And here I'm just going to pick yellow slightly orange and then here will be uh, full red okay so think of it as a temperature basically and at the end I'm just gonna add glow to it um, orangey color tweak some parameters just to get a really nice glow Maybe something like this. Right, so now it's the time actually to go in back and trying to tweak the some of the parameters and see if uh, our system works. I'm just going to go back to the tile sampler, maybe X amount. I'm going to put two. Obviously, that doesn't work. Six, this is what we had. Um, I think this looks 
pretty decent although we got like a, a little bit of data here that we don't probably need and what about the other slide there okay let's take maybe six by six and let's go uh, further down Okay. Position random, I think this will be changing our shape pretty drastically. I kind of like this, that we kind of eroding from here. Let's go to the trapezoid. All right, so we can actually make this one a little bit thinner. And our spikes, I think they look now. Yeah, I think they look a little bit better. Now let's go maybe to the um, splatter circular. We can increase the the amount of the patterns and get those really nice spikes. Change the radius a little bit, maybe, and spread as well. So I kind of like uh, this. Now let's see if uh, our random uh, sliders uh, do anything now. Okay. Awesome, okay, scale random actually gives us nice variation. Okay, cool, so I'm just gonna keep this one, bring it into Unreal Engine and just to update and see how it looks uh, in comparison. Okay, so I've imported the texture and here is the original one, this one, and number four is the, the one that, exactly the one that we actually made now. Uh, so I've replaced the uh, materials into this system. So this is the original one and this is uh, from the texture that we just made. And to be fair, they kind of look very similar, although I think I prefer the shapes and especially spikes uh, in this one. In the new one. Very similar, so it's very difficult to tell. But yeah, I, I don't know, I can't like them both. So I'm gonna keep that texture. And um, yeah, I think this is it for this video. And in the next one, we're gonna attempt to make uh, this next. All right, thanks for watching.